There were once five and twenty tin soldiers, who were all brothers, for they had been made out of the same old tin spoon. They shouldered arms and looked straight before them, and wore a splendid uniform, red and blue. The first thing in the world they ever heard were the words, Tin soldiers! uttered by a little boy, who clapped his hands with delight when the lid of the box in which they lay was taken off. They were given him for a birthday present, and he stood at the table to set them up. The soldiers were all exactly alike, excepting one, who had only one leg. He had been left to the last, and then there were not enough of the melted tin to finish him. So they made him to stand firmly on one leg, and this caused him to be very remarkable. The table on which the tin soldiers stood was covered with other playthings, but the most attractive to the eye was a pretty little paper castle. Through the small windows the rooms could be seen. In front of the castle a number of little trees surrounded a piece of looking-glass, which was intended to represent a transparent lake. Swans made of wax swam on the lake and were reflected in it. All this was very pretty, but the prettiest of all was a tiny little lady, who stood at the open door of the castle. She also was made of paper, and she wore a dress of clear muslin, with a narrow blue ribbon over her shoulders, just like a scarf. In front of these was fixed a glittering tinsel rose, as large as her whole face. The little lady was a dancer, and she stretched out both her arms and raised one of her legs so high that the tin soldier could not see it at all, and he thought that she, like himself, had only one leg. That is the wife for me, he thought, but she is too grand and lives in a castle, while I have only a box to live in, five and twenty of us all together. There is no place for her. Still, I must try to make her acquaintance. Then he laid himself at full length on the table behind a snuff box and stood upon it, so that he could peep up at the delicate lady, who continued to stand on one leg without losing her balance. When evening came, the other tin soldiers were all placed in the box, and the people of the house went to bed. Then the playthings began to have their own games together, to pay visits, to have sham fights, and to give balls. The tin soldiers rattled in their box. They wanted to get out and join the amusements, but they could not open the lid. The nutcrackers played at leapfrog, and the pencil jumped about the table. There was such a noise that the canary woke up and began to talk and in poetry, too. Only the tin soldier and the dancer remained in their places. She stood on tiptoe with her legs stretched out, as firmly as he did on his one leg. He never took his eyes from her, not even for a moment. The clock struck twelve, and with a bounce, up sprang the lid of the snuff box. But instead of snuff, there jumped up a little black goblin, for the snuff box was a toy puzzle. Tin soldier, said the goblin, Don't wish for what does not belong to you. But the tin soldier pretended not to hear. Very well. Wait till tomorrow, then, said the goblin. When the children came in the next morning, they placed the tin soldier in the window. Now, whether it was the goblin who did it or the drought, it is not known. But the window flew open, and out fell the tin soldier, heels overhead from the third story into the street beneath. It was a terrible fall for he came head downwards, his helmet and his bayonet stuck between the flagstones, and his one leg up in the air. The servant maid and the little boy went downstairs directly to look for him, but he was nowhere to be seen, although once they nearly trod upon him. If he had called out, Here I am! It would have been all right, but he was too proud to cry out for help while he wore a uniform. Presently it began to rain, and the drops fell faster and faster, till there was a heavy shower. When it was over, two boys happened to pass by, and one of them said, Look, there's a tin soldier. He ought to have a boat to sail in. So they made a boat out of newspaper and placed the tin soldier in it and sent him sailing down the gutter while the two boys ran beside it and clapped their hands. Good gracious, what large waves arose in the gutter and how fast the stream rolled on for the rain had been very heavy. The paper boat rocked up and down and turned itself round sometimes so quickly that the tin soldier trembled. Yet he remained firm. His countenance did not change. He looked straight before him and shouldered his musket. Suddenly 
The boat shot under a bridge which formed a part of a drain, and then it was as dark as a soldier's box. Where am I going now? Thought he. This is the black goblin's fault, I am sure. Oh well, if the little lady were only here with me in the boat, I should not care for any darkness. Suddenly, there appeared a great water rat who lived in the drain. Have you a passport? Asked the rat. Give it to me at once. But the tin soldier remained silent and held his musket tighter than ever. The boat sailed on, and the rat followed it. How he did gnash his teeth and cry out to the bits of the wooden straw! Stop him! Stop him! He has not paid toll, and he has not shown his pass. But the stream rushed on stronger and stronger. The tin soldier could already see daylight shining where the arch ended. Then he heard a roaring sound, quite terrible enough to frighten the bravest man. At the end of the tunnel, the drain fell into a large canal over a steep place, which made it as dangerous for him as a waterfall would be to us. He was too close to it to stop, so the boat rushed on, and the poor tin soldier could only hold himself as stiffly as possible, without moving an eyelid, to show that he was not afraid. The boat whirled round three or four times, and then filled with water to the very edge. Nothing could save it from sinking. He now stood up to his neck in water, while deeper and deeper sank the boat, and the paper became soft and loose with the wet, till at last the water closed over the soldier's head. He thought of the elegant little dancer whom he should never see again, and the words of the song sounded in his ears: "Farewell, warrior, ever brave, drifting onward to thy grave." Then the paper boat fell to pieces, and the soldier sank into the water, and immediately afterwards. Was swallowed up by a great fish. Oh, how dark it was inside the fish! A great deal darker than in the tunnel, and narrower too. But the tin soldier continued firm and lay at full length, shouldering his musket. The fish swam to and fro, making the most wonderful movements. But at last he became quite still. After a while, a flash of lightning seemed to pass through him, and then the daylight approached. And a voice cried out, "I declare, here is the tin soldier." The fish had been caught, taken to the market, and sold to the cook, who took him into the kitchen and cut him open with a large knife. She picked up the soldier and held him by the waist between her finger and thumb, and carried him into the room. They were all anxious to see this wonderful soldier who had travelled about inside a fish, but he was not at all proud. They placed him on the table, and. How many curious things do happen in the world! There he was in the very same room from the window of which he had fallen. There were the same children, the same playthings, standing on the table, and the pretty castle with the elegant little dancer at the door. She still balanced herself on one leg and held up the other, so she was as firm as himself. It touched the tin soldier so much to see her that he almost wept tin tears, but he kept them back. He only looked at her, and they both remained silent. Presently, one of the little boys took up the tin soldier and threw him into the stove. He had no reason for doing so; therefore, it must have been the fault of the black goblin who lived in the snuff box. The flames lighted up the tin soldier as he stood. The heat was very terrible, but whether it proceeded from the real fire or from the fire of love, he could not tell. Then he could see the bright colors were faded from his uniform, but whether they had been washed off during his journey or from the effects of his sorrow, no one could say. He looked at the little lady, and she looked at him. He felt himself melting away, but he still remained firm with his gun on his shoulder. Suddenly, the door of the room flew open, and the draught of air caught up the little dancer. She fluttered like a feather right into the stove by the little tin soldier. And was instantly in flames, and was gone. The tin soldier melted down into a lump, and the next morning, when the maid servant took the ashes out of the stove, she found him in the shape of a little tin heart. But of the little dancer, nothing remained but the tinsel rose, which was burnt black as cinder.